Morris on the sweep. Brings it up. All right, you know, thanks, Coach, for having me on. Uh, you know, I just, you know, when you kind of gave me the call, you know, as I've, you know, talked about it, and of course, as you know, you've seen through my Twitter, I've kind of transitioned now to high school ball. But this was a great exercise to really get me to go back and, and look through the evolution of what we did, you know, what we've done in the last seven years. Um, you know, I, we talked about it, and I was trying to narrow that title, and I think this is the perfect thing for us, a run game evolution. I've been blessed to coach some great kids, you know, but also I've been, you know, blessed in certain ways to have certain challenges, which as I look now have helped me and built that foundation. So my point of sharing today is just, you know, to help any coach that whatever situation they're in, you know, whether you have the best line, whether you have some great backs or whatever that situation they present in the run game, there are some creative things that you can do. And just by hopefully sharing uh, what we've done, you know, can help somebody. So I'll get into the presentation here. First, I'll start, of course, with my coaching background. I started coaching youth ball in 2013. Uh, it's a funny story. I, I used to work for a public accounting firm, and actually, we would go out to different companies to perform audits. And mm -hmm. I remember meeting a guy, you know, and I was kind of watch some of his highlights. I would come over there and ask him for work. And he was sitting there telling me, you know, about his his you know, youth football team he was coaching. And of course, you know, being a football junkie even at that time, it piqued my interest. And it was one of those conversations, you know, where it was like, hey. Uh, you know, whenever you get your team, because he was the defensive coordinator at the time, I'd like to come on and, and help you out. Um, and so I ended up getting that call July 15th um, of 2013 and saying, hey, I just got, you know, a guy, and I forgot about it. this was probably two or three years before. And he gave me the call and said, hey, I just got the head coaching job. You want to come on as my OC? And so that was a very frantic two-week process there of us uh, kind of crafting an offer. Start August 1st, right? <laughs> right, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Start August 1st. <laughs> So, you know, it's very, you know, interesting and, and rough process, of course, but it was, you know, well worth it of crafting an offense, getting an understanding of what we want to do, actually learning and getting, you know, that experience calling plays. I've never called plays before. Um, but that first year, like I said, started out, did a had a pretty good year. And I think we were, I want to say it was seven and five, maybe, um, lost in the first round of the playoffs. But the experience we got was really, you know, invaluable and it, it helped as I continued to go on. So, uh, this past year, we were the Pop Warner Little Panthers, which is our league, uh, the city champions at the Junior PUE Division, which is nine to 11 year olds. Uh, and that was our sixth straight championship appearance. Wow. So, you know, kind of had a, a pretty, pretty steep uh, learning curve, was able to coach in some, some pretty big games after that. And it's, it's been our fourth straight championship. Uh, we were also the 2016 and 2019 Mid South Regional runner up, uh, with the 2019 year losing to the national champions, Virginia Beach Mustangs, as we talked about, coach. And in 2016, lost to the Churchland Tigers up there, in, up there in that same area, which really that team had split off from Virginia Beach, who was the national runner-up the year before. Um, that team made a semifinal run, I think, um, in 2016, losing to the eventual national champions. Uh, you know, and the big thing for us, you know, we're, we're no huddle spread passing attack. You know, I probably amassed that that second to between the second to fourth year, which for us was Pee Wee, which is 10-11. Um, and 12 to our junior varsity, junior midget level, which is 11 through 13, mostly 12 and 13. Um, that's close to 3,000 passing yards and 20 passing TDs in that time frame. Um, also started coaching high school, got the wonderful opportunity in 2018 to uh, coach at Hopewell High School. That's a high school where they were four and 42, um, I think in the five years preceding where we, you know, kind of where we were this past year, you know, we were fortunate enough and worked hard enough to go four and seven. So. It's a reclamation project of, of you know of sorts and gives me a great understanding of how to build a program from the ground up and I'm happy to be a part of that. Um, you know, this year I'll kind of step back a little bit clearly from from youth ball after being named varsity offensive coordinator, but you know I'm more than happy and you know my line coach will step in as as the offensive coordinator and I think pretty much continue where we left off with a strong 2019 campaign. I'll go forward kind of into our background and you know our organization is the Steel Creek Seahawks. We're located in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our organization specifically is on the south side uh, near Carowinds is always the, the thing I give out of town is the, the you know, kind of the landmark uh, of where we are. We're literally on the border uh, of South Carolina. I think you go two minutes outside of the park and you're in, you know, in South Carolina. So we do draw from some of those Fort Mill, blessed to get a couple Rock Hill kids, which, you know, if you know anything about the history of it, David Clowney and uh, Stephon Gilmore and some of these other top talent. There's a wealth of talent down there in that Rock Hill area for such a small town. 
Um, so we do pull some North and South Carolina kids, which I think helps us and gives us a great advantage for some, for some top talent. Uh, we're a member of the Pop Warner Little Panthers League, which is uh, all Charlotte and uh, Charlotte area teams, which is a part of the Mid-South region, which encompasses uh, Columbia, South Carolina, all the way up to Virginia Beach, Virginia, including you know all the major cities in that area. You know, you're talking Raleigh, Wilmington, um, Virginia Beach. So pretty good area. And I mean, you know, if you're familiar, it's pretty good football, you know, there, especially including the seven five seven. So we've had the fortunate ability to meet some top talent and really you know, challenge us as coaches. Uh, my head coach uh, is G Coach Greg Paylor. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't be on here today. Um, but my line coach, I always, you know, like to show show love to him, especially when we're talking run game, as he is, you know, just as much as I've been a great architect of some of the things that we're going to talk about today and that we're going to do. Um, like I said, he's coached with us for seven, six years. I've coached for seven, which lets you know after year one, I said, I got to get a guy in here to, to help me elevate the game. And uh, year two for us was a, a major, major thing we did there. And I think that helped. I'll go for it. You know, it's, it's, I always consider it, you know, whenever I'm talking, you know, about youth ball, I like to look forward and kind of point like a movie to some of the stars in the, you know, in the show and some of the guys that you'll see. These are three of the guys. I mean, of course, there's some other guys, you know, doing some, some great stuff as well that you'll see. Um, the guy to the left, uh, Matthew Tamala is a great you know, quarterback we had. He actually played some tight end and receiver for us um, to start. You know, he's a very versatile kid and ended up going to quarterback and now is at uh, Charlotte Christian High School, which is in the North Carolina uh, Private School Association. They won the state championship this year, and he currently holds uh, two FCS offers. Um, and then in 2019, the 2019 Juju State Champion, uh, Josiah Davis, um, was a part of Providence Day, and he's actually committed to UVA. As a youth kid, I mean, he tore through our, you know, our league. I think the first year he maybe had 30 touchdowns, was a, you know, a track, track finalist. I mean, just one of those guys where he's the guy, you know, best guy in the room, and he really showed that and, and did some amazing things. Uh, year two, we, all, we actually picked up um, the guy on the far right, Cameron Smith. Uh, he was the conference player of the year this year. Um, all purpose yards this year as a junior, he had over 2,000 yards. Um, he's gone you know, to all conference, all state. He's committed to uh, the Naval Academy. So, you know, we, you know, I, I don't, I'm never like with, you know, you get on a Zoom or get somewhere and guys are just talking about something. But I got a funny story. I went to uh, Glazier Clinic and this guy, I'm sitting in there probably about year two or year three. So, you know, my football knowledge was, you know, I was still learning a ton <laughs> and, you know, now, but, you know, I'm listening to a guy talk about inverted beer and, you know, especially with the guy in the middle there looking to, to implement that with him. And the guy's showing all these, you know, these, these clinics, and these cut ups, and this guy's just tearing it up. And he's like, yeah, he's an early enrollee at USC. And he's like, not the one in Columbia. And I immediately got out the room. Like, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you just got the guy and you know, I never want to sit here and act like, I, you know, I'm the one just you know, pulling the strings. We've had some great, uh, great cast of characters. And I think that's helped us. So let's talk run game progression. You know, as you know, with youth football, um, you know, people have different philosophies and schools of thoughts in an organization is how, you know, you coach and, and how you have your, your group of coaches. For us at, at Steel Creek, we stay with our same group of kids. I like that in, in a way, you know, it, it feels more like high school with the group. Um, it, it helps us to continue to grow. I think we're able to, you know, to, to understand the kids better rather than that whole short period of having to get to know the guys and what they do best. So we had, I just, we've had two groups of kids. Um, so starting in 2013, when we started, we went from junior Pee Wee all the way to junior midget, and and those kids that you you know you saw on the previous slide, they're now 2021 kids uh, entering their senior year. Um, this first group, like I said, we were a lot more spread, 10, 11 personnel. Again, that's one running back, four receivers, 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end, three receivers, uh, run game based. Used a lot of direct snap again with you know the receiver we had I just showed you you know that's yeah. the guy we want to utilize in the you know with the direct snap and even the guy on the far end you know with our uh, Cam Smith our running back we just felt in those situations you know quarterback actually was a really good blocker you know we had a good group and I think that helped us to get numbers because we really struggled to build a, a a great line and you know I think that was something that we did to compensate for the fact we didn't have a line with the experience that that we would have liked so. That was kind of some stuff we did, the unbalanced line where we're literally moving a tackle over and, you know, we're going right guard, you know, left tackle, right tackle, um, tight end type stuff. So everything we could do to, to steal a gap and, you know, really based on, you know, based early, especially as the kids got older, they really, you know, when Coach, Tom, you know, Coach Jerry Thompson, he really helped 
to, you know, with these kids to really get them um, to be able to, to get better. And so we were able to run a ton of, you know, zone, then to mix in some power and some tray. And I think that that really helped us. And with some of those guys being smaller, helped us to, to be really um, to effective there. So with the second group of kids, we took over in 2017. We picked them up at the Mighty Might age, which is eight to nine. Uh, you know, with this group, I think we, we had a better segment of linemen, you know, so it helped us to be a little more, I guess, simplistic what we did. We actually had some great running backs. I think if you go back and like I said, looking at what we had before, we had a lot of kind of long, lanky guys. You know, it had more guys that you'd like to see on the outside and, and, and can get them really just in space and get going. I think now we have a true, you know, a couple of true running backs. And I think you'll see that with the clips where we're a lot more 21, 22 personnel and, and really just have a dominant run game based on our offensive line. I mean, we, we are in weighted football, but a lot of our, our line in this year, we're, we're close to the max weight. I mean, even a couple probably having to take a four week vacation in the beginning just to you know, allow for the weight to get down and the, the, our weight improve or our weight increase throughout the year. So yeah, it allowed them to meet that, that higher weight, uh, weight limit. So we were able to push some more people around and, you know, and, and even still, I had a, uh, I've got a quarterback who's, you know, very good throwing the ball and running. So we had a much more defined QB run game and, you know, we were more, more predicated running duo and, and ISO. So you'll see that with some of the clips, but I'll get started into the first, you know, kind of our first group, that 2013 to 2016 run game, and we'll go from here. So for us, you know, because we threw the ball a lot, like you saw the stat and, you know, really no huddle spread, had some great quarterbacks we were able to really get light boxes and to take advantage of that, we were just able to simply run inside zone. Um, you know, you know, for, for anybody, it's no real, you know, no real secret here as to what this is. We would have, we would have a read, which I'd have to constantly get on my quarterbacks about because they're just handing the ball off as, you know, as you know, it's one of the younger ages, but you know, we're reading that backside defensive end had a pretty athletic left tackle who was great at getting the linebackers as you'll see with some of the clips. So, you know, teams we were playing, especially in our bigger games, especially as we got older, we're getting two twos, which is, you know, you're tackling nose directly over the guard. And we're getting two fives with those defensive ends on those outside shoulder of the tackle. So if we're getting something simple like that, which is very you know, similar to what you would get into, a, you know, at a high school level, let's just keep it simple and, and run zones. I mean, a lot of times it turned into guards, you know, you know blocking guards. Center you know, would, would go forward to, to block the nose and look to get to the mic backer. And then, of course, that right tackle would block the defensive end. Um, so I'll show, let me show you, I'll show a couple clips uh, first of um, our simple inside zone and just how we, you know, how we ran it. Okay, here we're running it out of two by two. Because here we're running out of two by two again, you see, and actually because of the way this game went, we have an even lighter box than, than that. They're actually in two high. So they have two safeties up here. And we've got a 4-1 box. Um, this game really, like I said, turned on its head when even though we weren't as successful completing passes, we were able to, 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 to scare the defense enough to where they're able to lighten the box. And you'll see here we're actually running it to the right. So we're leaving this guy, which he's a pretty athletic defensive end, but we're leaving this guy alone. Or actually, I think, no, we locked him because this guy was giving us problems all game. We locked him this time. Guard's going to go here and to the center to the uh, defensive tackle here. The right guard, again, has got that uh, defensive tackle there. The right tackle has a defensive end. We're just simply having our running back, you know, follow the, follow the aiming point of the uh, inside foot of the guard to read that and get upfield. So, again, you'll see there a good block. We could have held on, you know, our right, right guard here could have done a better job. He kind of got taken inside here. As we see the defensive end, you know, shed, shed him, you know, of course, even being a little bit over, a little bit leaning forward. And the defensive tackle was able to, to get this, as this would have been a huge game, as you can see by the hole. Um, I think, you know, we did a great job in, in blocking this, but that one key block, as we know, and I mean, again, we see our right tackle kind of getting beat inside. You know, as we know, as you football coaches, you're never going to get it perfect. But, you know, here it was good enough to where we were able to get a good gain of, you know, five, six yards with some tough running and a very active uh, offensive line here. So. You know, like I said, it's something big that we love to run, you know, especially when we got the light boxes um, as, we, you know, as we got older. Here's another example out of trips. I think I want to say here we let the defensive end go and read them. We're supposed to. Again, here, good block. And actually the defensive end got, you know, got ran into the trash. So we're 
supposed to be reading him, but again, we as we talked about, our quarterback knew. And in this game, our running back had a great game, so I think he felt as if he, he should be giving the ball more. Hey, um, never go wrong with giving it, man. I mean, oh no, I, that's what I tell those guys. You know, if there's ever any doubt, just give the ball. I mean, you see here a little bit difference in the defense. You know, we got we have a two uh, four two box, but um, the left tackle did a good job of getting to that second level, really maintaining contact. He sucked at you know actually staying on his guy, but you know, great job. I think it was a footwork up until we talk about you know good foot fire, you know maintaining that breakdown. If you'd have just locked on and kept going, he'd have been fine. But you know, this is some of the examples of some of the stuff we do. I think there's one more. This was a great example of a play. I don't know why this guy's hand is here. But, uh, <laughs> You know, it's like I said, it's actually a championship game. We're playing in, uh, in the downtown stadium. Um, so it's hard to get here. Left tackle's a little slow getting out of stance, but no, he's supposed to get, be getting to uh, the linebacker who came on late. Our left guard does a good job here of understanding that the defensive, end, uh, defensive tackle slanted to the center there. He looks to go get linebacker. Our right tackle here does a great job of locking onto this front side defensive end, and our right guard. Um, really helps to create that hole by blocking down on that guy inside of him and really creating a, a mess in the middle, but also, you know, a great hole there for us to get a big game. Defensive end comes down, running back's very patient. This was a guy, you know, it was a guy for us that played some running back the year before, but really broke out and had about 15, 16 touchdowns. But something great about him is he always you know, did a great job reading his block. Receivers doing a decent job downfield blocking and, ex, you know, really – holding up the, you know, the the linebackers and safeties. And again, when the free safety has to come make a tackle, that's always going to be a big game. Good shape. Let me see. All right. Some of our, our new stuff. So that was zone for us. Again, it's, you know, nothing that's groundbreaking, but I think, you know, the big thing when, you know, if you're a team that likes to spread the ball, really, you know, honing in on zone and, and taking advantage of those light boxes by, you know, having a back that's patient and can read the hole and just stick his foot in the ground and go. It's something that was very, very beneficial to us. And let me ask you just a, a random question here. Um, yep. Typically, the, these DNs that you're reading, did they really come up field and box, or did they ever really squeeze? I, I feel like you're probably giving the ball much more than he was pulling, right? At least in our yeah, league, I, I, I would say taught to box, yeah. so we, we'd be giving that all the time. Uh, I'm just curious. Right. And, and no, for, yeah, for the most part, we would we would be giving the ball. I think, and, and I think that's why you know our quarterback really got lulled into giving the football, just because so many times they're just coming straight up field, um, and that was always our, our coaching point. Again, they're they're not really squeezing as most teams are going to box and not playing a you know really not playing you know spill and kill technique on the on the defensive side of the ball. So no, you're absolutely right. I mean, I like I guess I would think it was probably ninety to ninety five percent. That was really the only team that I thought would have the potential to squeeze. Number six uh, was a very aggressive defensive end, and you'll see even in some other clips as we get into um, power and counter. We played that team actually twice that year, um, one with our starting quarterback and actually one with our third string quarterback, which we'll get to some of that power and counter stuff as we were a lot different than, you know, the, the thin personnel. But, yeah, that that was one thing I was worried when you saw me running a lot of times backside uh, with that number six backside as he gave us problems. So yeah, it's it's most of the time we're gonna give that ball, but I still want my quarterback to be aware. Yeah, definitely. All right. <clears throat> so here's some, uh, like I said, some of the unbalanced line we talked about. I you know wanted to make sure I put the letters in of of the positions to to be aware. I remember you know before I, I put this in and, and install this and, and put work, you know plays around it, I always heard Chip Kelly talk about the defenses align to receivers; they don't align to the offense. Um, and I, that really is something that's always stuck with me. And whenever we you know, got into this formation, you know, I talk about the direct snap. We would run direct snap um, as a key play for us to this trips. So if we you know, move that left tackle back over and just bump that, that, uh, that bunch of trips there on the, on the line, we actually, that was a play for us where we ran. And that was, I think that year with this group, that actually was Eagle. Eagle for us was just you know, its own play, whether it's direct snap or, or anything. We would actually run that to that bunch trip side and so this was a great change of pace where teams were used to us running to that bunch of trips. Now in the second half or now in the second quarter or something later as a counter off of that, we could go unbalanced line and then actually run it um, to the side where we actually have the extra gap. So this was a good play for us. We would run Giant. Giant was always our, our QB sweep. Eagle was our um, was, was kind of more of our off-tackle zone run, so more outside zone, inside zone kind of thing. And really here, our quarterback and, and, our, and our two receiver are just reaching. Um, you know, it's good for us. Again, we're stealing a gap with that tackle. You know, he knows in left tackle for us, as you know, most teams is one of your stronger guys. So he was able to actually block in space. So this was a key play for us. Like, I, you know, we talked about earlier, 
some of our linemen, you know, weren't the best um, at this beginning stage. This was my second year, I think, we installed this. And, and so it was great for us to really, really steal some yards. And as I showed you before, uh, having a guy like, like, you know, like Josiah really made things easy. And we'll, you know, kind of show that with some of the clips here. Let me get to it. So again, like I talked about, I have some uh, clips with Eagle, which is just off tackle, our you know more inside zone, and Giants are outside zone stuff. So I'll show both. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Giant here. And simply, it's a little fuzzier. This film's a little bit older, but we'll see. See here, you know, this is our side we're running to, and because it's Giant, where you have the quarterback on the inside of the back, we actually would move him out of here like a receiver, just so he could match up with with the corner and get that block on the outside as we're not worried about, you know, this linebacker blitzing gear or anything like that. So, again, we have the bunch receivers, you know, receivers on this side. We have, you know, you got one, two, and really looks like, like I said, three on that side really paying attention. I think the safety is over top here. But for us, it was just a great wide side play with the guy that was, you know, extremely fast. <laughs> you know, nothing really much to it. But great outside zone direct snap. As you see here, I always talk about the two key blocks are always, you know, these, these two guys on the outside and how well they do dictates how well this play is going to go. And those were that was my you know my one of my quarterbacks and my you know my running back so that was something I was I was willing to live with and you know guy with speed you know never hurts here and so for him to get two key blocks there on the outside and again it's outside zone we're just trying to get a couple yards it turns a second and eight into a first down uh, so you know nothing too crazy but it was something that was big for us same thing you're gonna see here because they played tighter and, and uh, this team played their corners you know, kind of play their corners back against tight bunt sets you know it worked. As you can see, as we talked about, you know, the alignment, uh, you know, these guys worrying about, you know, these three receivers, that's exactly what we want to, you know, what we want to see here. And, I mean, you've got a middle linebacker on the hash with our fastest guy and the fastest guy on the field that's looking to go wide. I take that as a win. And, again, we're talking about key blocks. So, you know, this DN and this back, you know, linebacker here, I'll take my guy on this small corner all day. And actually, that because that linebacker slowed, now we got this corner with our with our quarterback, who was a great blocker, even as small as he was. He just, he just pushes him out there, and that's a big game for us. So it, to me, it's something. It's an easy install play. As you know, if you've got two guys that can really block well, they they a lot of times are going to have that mismatch advantage. Linebacker slow, had a great block on the D end, great reach block there. We shoved this guy around, and we're not looking at him to make an important tackle. That that's a big play in the first down for us. Yeah, I mean that direct snuff. Direct snap stuff is nasty. Um, you know, I get new, I get pretty much new teams every year because I kind of stay at the eighth grade level, so I don't really get to stay with the team. But so you know, our talent. One year we won't be dripping with talent. One year we will be good. But um, you know, our direct snap we call it beast. It's pretty much the same thing. A little yep, bit different. No, I got you. But it that's always been good for us. Even if we aren't that good, it's always been solid for us. So you know, it's, it's no for really, sure. And that's honestly, in youth that's football, man, you up. need to have yeah, it. We, in my opinion. We're a wing T no. team, but we have yeah. our we have our beast package. That's no matter how if we're really good, it's really good. If we're if we're not very no, good, I, it's still good. So that you know, very underrated and underutilized. You know. Oh, I agree. One hundred percent. Youth football. In my I, I, I literally think I got that beast package because I I think you, somebody either you or someone wrote an article a while a while a while back on it. I think I installed it as a result. I remember seeing that it was something that's been key for us. And we've done some interesting things actually in the um, with the Eagle Clips in that game. We ended up winning I think like 33-6. We just exploded in the second half. Actually created a bunch of trips off of that. Instead of I would run Beast and I would run, you know, I'd call it our Voltron package where we just really have our best eleven. I mean, you're talking nasty DNs, great nose, whoever our guys that would just block and just get people out of the paint. We would do that. But we actually created kind of some of our unbalanced stuff to the right. And then we would have center guard, a wing back, like you see here, and we would have bunch trips on the outside. And with my, you know, with my quarterback, I showed you that's, you know, got a couple, you know, got the FCS offers. We would just have him in the back, and we would literally tell him, look, you know, you're counting three. If you count three outside, you know, you're able to, you know, you're able to 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 run inside and take advantage of the box. You got less than three, you're throwing that thing, and it's either you're throwing a bubble or you're throwing a go. And we actually scored on two goes on that. I, mean, I think I called one on a third and eight, and I checked to that fade route. We caught it right on the sideline. I wish I, it did take me a while to find it, but yeah, I wish I'd have had that queued up. I'll send it to you after. But yeah, just some great stuff with that. But that's the big thing when you don't have, you know, everything. Like some of these guys were still learning football, so this was great for us. So this is a switch here again. This is our eagle, as I talked about. This is just inside zone, really. You know, off. You know, we're running off tackles. You can see our quarterback was a lot of times what took us to the play, which you know sometimes was a tendency, but 
I love the backs I had. And again, he was a great blocker, so you still had the people going on. You know, you see here in a lot of times defense's response to extra guys is going to be to to widen their defensive end. Yeah. We got that a lot, especially this year. I'm fine taking the inside. And, you know, and I kind of use these two guys with, a, you know, an outside, inside thunder lightning capability. This guy was great at understanding, look, I, I'm just going to go off tackle and I'm going to, you know, take the yards that you guys give me. And right here, same thing. And you see just a great get off by our quarterback and by our left tackle. We were, you know, our O-line coach was very clear. If, you know, if no one's in front of you, you need to haul tail and get to a linebacker. And, you know, I think we we actually, this team surprisingly was undefeated before they played us. Like, there's still the schedule something to be desired, but, we, you know, we were proving a point in this game. You can kind of see now looking back at, at how, how aggressive we were. The you know, guys getting off the line, you know, great block on the outside here. Again, I'll take I'll take six yards. I, I hate the dancing. Uh, I can't remember getting all of them here uh, on this play, but you know, straight ahead, I, that was my big thing here. And, just, and it's funny you say it because I was thinking in my head, like you know, we we do a lot of tackle over from our wing team. We do run our beast a lot, so we're unbalanced yeah. a lot. And the team's yeah. answers is to widen the end or widen the outside linebacker. That's what they do. They don't account yeah. for the extra gaps, and you could really just run a leader ISO at the bubble. You know the gaps between the linemen, so you know 100 percent all day. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's a great you know that's that's great. Um, I guess alluding to some of the stuff that we did um, in the 2017 2019 year. So yeah, I'll I'll definitely get back to that. That's something I, you know we learned in the later there. But yeah, again here the same thing. Like I, I get on this guy, I'm like you just go forward. That that guy doesn't want to tackle you. So it's you know it, this was his first year actually playing for us, even as well as he did. So a lot to learn and a lot of lessons. You know, with all this, but we had some amazing talent. Again, like you know, we like this defense. Just got a great stop. You know, one thing's big for us is just to say, hey, just get us, you know, get us back in the, you know, in the field of play. You know, a team's going to be hyper aggressive uh, on the goal line is, you know, they kind of were, but you know, you're expecting that. So our big thing is just, hey, get us, you know, get us back into, you know, get us back into a good situation. And he does a great job here. And this was a real tough run, you know, getting us through. And you know, it, again, he did a lot of this work. Boom, you know, gets outside and goes. And you'll see outside, our quarterback does a great job of meeting the linebacker here. Our outside you know, re receiver walls off, quarterback meets the linebacker here, locks on, and that's good enough for our running back to break a tackle and get us nine yards. So we call a penalty on some of the fake. Too. I don't know. I didn't see it. But, you know, that was that was another one. So this, I think this is the last one I'll show. This was actually playing. The, we saw in this situation, year two, we had to play that exact same team the next week. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. And we beat them the first week, 34-20. I think quarterback threw for 180 in the first half. And we just, you know, softened the game away and let them, you know, kind of just we, – we figured we'd probably have to see them the next week and we were right. So they come in ready to go. And, I mean, you can see all the parents up here acting an absolute fool. I mean, it was one of the greatest – you know, I wish uh, I had coaches on here. It was one of the greatest football experiences I've ever been in in my life. I mean, it's a night game. They're acting a fool. I, they, my, my guys can't hear me. You know, and it's a very intense game. And, you know, and this was something to kind of calm us down and just, hey, take a quick five or six yards. And this, you know, you can tell you can tell the running back wasn't as fun loving in this in this uh, this clip here as he was in the other. He's looking to make a highlight reel in the other clip. I think it's I think we're down eight to six or something in this game right now. Or actually, you know, we're down six nothing in this game. So all the you know, all the, the thrills and the, the funny, you know, juking and stuff goes away. It's funny how that works. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I'll get back to, to some of the. The next clip and see what we have here. So again, like I said, the unbalanced line was great for us in the beginning. Um, those were things that were that were incredible and, and worked well. Uh, I'll, I'll go through these two pretty quickly. But um, the first one. So again, we talked about the light boxes. Um, as we got older, uh, we ran power and we ran tray a lot. So you know, the bigger thing is we wanted to run power. That was something you know our line coach you know has have a history and a background of running power. Um, that was something we were going to hang our hat on. So we brought in Trey as, as a compliment. So, you know, of course, you know, with counter, you know, you would be taking, you know, a counter step or you'd be showing one run and giving it away. You're a wing tee guy, of course. Um, so you have way more background on it than I, but just simply Trey, where we're just, you know, running and switching the, the responsibilities of the guard and either the tight end or the wing was something that really worked for us. And honestly, I think we ended up uh, majoring more in Trey than we did counter. You talk about a lot of these defensive ends that are coming up the field so much. The guard just simply kicking out in the in the tight end, getting up to the linebacker. Especially in youth football, where a lot of times it's the defensive end is going to be that guy to bring it in, but that linebacker is going to be the guy that you trust to make the tackle. So being able to fire a guy out at that backer is something that, to me, we actually were more successful. So 
I'll show both of these. I don't have a ton with, with power, so we should be able to get through that real quick. But Trey was really something that was that was key for us. And again, running it out of quads ensured we got a light box. And I thought that was that was great for us. And you know, we'll see here. And that was you know, like I said, the quarterback I told you he I swear he, he came he came from the offseason and, and I guess he'd been doing curls all offseason because he came out here looking <laughs> jack. Um, but you know, the key for us was, you know, we place our running back here inside on the on the quads. You know, they're you know, they're still trying to figure out what's going on. We're inside the 10. I thought it was something great because you know, teams, because we threw the ball and they knew we had guys that could, they would respect it. They don't bring a guy inside, and now you look, we've got, you know, pretty much a a four-two box with this guy you know blitzing backside. So hey, I'll take that all day. Because we've got a guy that looks like he's over the guard. Um, the guard, our guard and tackle are trying to block down. It ends up turning into an A gap pull, which our offensive line coach you know, told them first, you know, first hole you see, take that in there and, and go. I know that's I was joking with D'Amico about the, the debate of uh, A gap versus B gap power, but um, again, for me, I ain't downhill. Now, you know, downhill is cool for me. And you'll see here, our guard instantly goes and finds his guy. Quarterback was a bull inside. It's turned to actually turned into a great goal line play for us. So, you know, front side, I thought we did a good job. You know, center. And it goes look, looks for work here, backside, guard and, and tackle, moves that guy out, out of the paint and gets him out of the way. Quarterback does a great job, you know, getting in there and scoring. Um, so actually, here's our other quarterback. So we had two quarterbacks, um, our junior midget years, a guy that also played DB for us, played running back, very versatile guy, which always I always tell guys, you know, with youth football, you, you know, no matter what position you play, you never know, you know, where you're gonna be needed. I mean, he, I don't think he's grown six inches since uh, he was 13 and he's down in the senior year. But this past year, their starting quarterback actually went down. And, and because of all the experience he had playing quarterback, he actually, and he's down in South Carolina in Fort Mill, he actually had to go in and uh, was able to beat a top, pretty top program in Spartanburg. Um, and I think was a player of the week that week for everything he did to help them, you know, lead this team to victory. Always a lesson, I, you know, I tell my guys, and I remember, you know, talking to his mom when she debated on like, hey, well, should he keep working the quarterback? And it's like, you, you never know where you're going to be needed. Just understand the game. Just be put yourself in a position where you can be effective. And, you know, it goes from there. So, I mean, that's that's always – this kid's a great example of such a team kid and a team player. So, I always love to, you know, to show highlights of him and some of the things that he's doing. And, again, the same thing. I mean, you know, this team really spread out with us when we went wide as they were, you know, concerned with the pass. We do get a linebacker here, that's, which creates a little bit more of an issue where we've got a tighter box. So, wasn't the greatest call by the by the by the idiot OC, but we're still able to with good block the yards here. Good block back, great double team to create that hole there. And we're able to get three, four yards. So, you know, again, it's in a situation like that, you give me a run that's getting me three or four yards, that's great. Guard does a good job here. Um, good kick step and you know, he sees the double team, which I think that's something that's key. Um, with our guards to just have good enough sense to where, you know, the first time, like you said, you saw that the, the double team was outside. Here you can clearly see these guys are, are blocking down and working that way. Guard does a great job in pulling up around that to look for his linebacker. And the quarterback knows you better follow. <laughs> you better follow that guy. And again, with a great kick out, you really see our crease that opens up there. And even with a box that was you know a little heavier than we would like out of quads, which the you know, quarterback's small as he is, he's still able to put his head down and get his three or four yards. So yeah, nice we nice love play power. There. Nice yep. play there. Yeah, no, that's that I love like I said, I love that. That wasn't a play where it was, you know, we really were at a disadvantage, but the guys really executed well to, to get us where we needed to be. What I like um, too is how you motion yeah. the kick out guy down. That because yes. a lot of times they won't even run with them. We do a lot of motion. We they don't even they either overshift the motion or they don't do anything. You know, they stay for sure. And I had so, I had to get there, honestly. Like I, I think, you know, my O line coach and my head coach and you know, him being a defensive guy. He really pushed me to, you know, to getting to motion. In the beginning, I was a little more stubborn with that, and I'm glad he did because I, you know, I love utilizing motion. Um, but I'll get into Trey now. So we talked about that. We're switching the responsibilities of the guard now, kicking out the defensive end uh, and the tight end. And in this situation, having to, you know, having to block uh, the linebacker. So funny story here. So this is the same team we played in the championship game that year and beat. We lost. So our starting quarterback that you saw in South Carolina, and the way Pop Warner, you know, does down here. You can't play middle school and, you know, and youth ball, which, you know, I can't, I'm can't. i completely fine with. Uh, but the way the schedule works, South Carolina ends before our championship game. So, you know, we had our quarterback to where he was, you know, he he, he came and he would practice with us. But, you know, the big guy, so he, he went ahead to the South Carolina middle school ball, started, you know, and did well to prepare, of course, for his next year with high school. So we had our backup quarterback was the last clip that you saw. He actually got hurt in our week two game. 
Um, so now we have a guy who I think this guy was this past year was the South Carolina upper state like lacrosse player of the year. But as you can see, this ain't, this ain't a quarterback that you really want to <laughs> that you really want to have. <laughs> uh, it was an interesting situation, and all the spread and all you know everything that we did. This team was so confused because you know we line up consistently in trips and quads, as you see. This game, we ran a ton of 20 personnel, as you can see here with the two backs. You know, we ran a ton of 21. Sorry, it's 21. Sorry, it's tight end here. We ran a ton of 21. We really ran a lot of direct snap. Kind of, you know, took it back to our first couple of years. I think it gave us the advantage in this game. I think it was the only game I've ever been a part of. We had, I think we got two safeties in this game. And I think we came at halftime. After halftime, it was 4 nothing. I don't think I've ever – the referees were shaking their head. It was one of the craziest situations ever. Uh, but, you know, we just struggled, of course, with our third string quarterback and them loading the box, but up the defense with short ports to score some uh, home runs for us. All right. So, again, here, Trey. So, we're coming to this side. So, you'll see this tight end do a good job getting to this linebacker. The guard kind of sucks here. Um, I, you know, I don't like showing all, all your winners. I think it's a great teaching point to show this guard pull across and the importance of attacking the upfield shoulder. We'll see that. He struggled to do that and really become aggressive in, in doing so. And, you know, this defensive end makes a tackle. As I told you about this number six, he stayed outside, but he definitely was going to peek his head inside if he saw a run. So, you know, running this at him a lot of times made it tougher early on. As we can see, you know, his guard gets caught that's aiming at the backside shoulder. This shoulder is still open. He's not, you know, he's not attacking upfield, and this defensive end is able to make the play. So even still, because our running back, you know, was a, was a hard-nosed guy, we're still able to get three or four, and you see our line coach about to let him know, you know, hey, we need to do a better job at that. So we learned our lesson very early. That was probably, I think that was might have been the first drive. So we ended up running to this side, um, and, you know, this defensive end was a lot better. The, whole, the other defensive end we're staying away from is on the, on the back side. So we do a good job here. You'll see, you know, a great, um, you know, great block attacking the upfield shoulder. Running back does a great job getting downhill, and defensive end almost comes in and drags us down from behind. But it was a great run here. So he gets it, great block there by the by the left guard, and here's a great run. I mean, it just you know all of that. The rest of that was a running back. But again, this great block here. Left guard does a great job getting upfield shoulder, maintaining contact. Defensive end, while you know big enough, wasn't super aggressive. We were able to take advantage of that as well. You'll see the 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 right uh, tackle and right guard here with a great double team and really aggressive, you know, attacking of that defensive end to create uh, defensive tackle, excuse me, to create that hole. So this was you know a big play, and you'll see. <laughs> yes, this is the very next play <laughs> in, of this film. I mean, we really went down the field running the same play, and, and you know, again, you'll see some great examples here by his guard. Defensive end doesn't want to get hit. Guard does a does a bad job. He's a little tired, I think, here, but. You know, either way, this is a play. We're still able to get big yards. Very next play, I'm not changing it up. Same thing here. Linebacker, and, and you know, we look, you know, I, I love to look at the double teams too. Double team, we're doing a good job pushing. 99 could have done a better job there of getting to the linebacker. You know, he was, he was kind of our, you know, a backup guy that we utilize a lot. But he, you know, he understood first level, take care of business. I'd have loved for him to you know, have his head up. And I know our old line coach would have, would have probably definitely let him know on the sideline. But, you know, he, I, I can't argue with the guy really trying to block down. He goes and actually blocks that linebacker. I think it's a walk-in touchdown. When we get there, he doesn't look his head up. But, you know, definitely, you know, at the, at the front level, you know, that first level, we're getting guys doing a great job. You know, I talked junk to him here. I thought he did a great job blocking down. You'll see that same thing here. Yeah, you got you that. See that? Yeah. You got a flag. I'm sorry. He does a great job firing off. You know, center did okay, but I mean, running back here, he was a beast. I mean, I think he carried it 30, 30 times in this game, and you know, it was very great for us. But again, that's 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 a favorite play of mine. I thought we did a good job running it this past year. Or sorry, past year. Um, I thought we did a good job running it. It really helped us out. And, and so that's 2013 to 2016 with that group. Um, we've adjusted with our newer group, as I talked about before. You know, we had a, a much better offensive line, more dominant offensive line. We had some great running backs. So, uh, you know, we switched. And as you talked more about that bubble, um, as we went into more 21, 22 personnel, you know, we saw a little more ISO to where, you know, we're really big on bigging and having that fullback uh, go to that, you know, that linebacker and really have our running back reading off of that block. I mean, that's something big that we did there. And, you know, I'll show a couple of clips. You know, ISO, simple, you know, simple ISO. We double team here. 
Um, and then, you know, our outside tight end is, you know, both tight ends are making sure the defensive ends are taken care of. And the fullback, which we love, you know, he had to make sure he got the linebacker out of the picture. I mean, it's, you know, a simple play, but really working on this ISO block is the difference a lot of times between touchdown and, you know, and four yard game. So let me get into a couple of these. And, I, and that's, you know, I think that's one of the things like, you know, we talk about is just having plays where guys can get in here and, and, and you know, really be successful. So this was the, one of the funniest things from, I think yeah, this was actually this year. So this was the first, this was, I know this is actually our second job. So we start our first job and fumble on the first play. I mean, the worst way to start a season, right? <laughs> like call a play, you fumble. This is the second play of that drive and you get a touchdown. I mean, just, like I said, this group is probably more talented, you know, talented athletically than our old group, but they're not, you know, I don't think they're as football savvy and they're you know, getting there. And of course they're young and I'm being harsh right now, but you know, that's, this is a group that I think is going to do well and, and really going to you know show up when they you know, hit that next level. So we'll see here again. This is this is us to the left for us, our ace left. You'll see pretty much this fullback, or you know, it's a, a, another running back for us. It's kind of unfair to call him a fullback, but you'll see here that this you know this fullback's gonna you know he knows his goal is to take care of this outside linebacker there. It's a simple read. He's aware of who he's supposed to get. Um, we'll see a great job here by our I think it's our left tackle getting up to that second level and getting this this middle linebacker and really those two blocks are what spring this play. And then you'll see the running back take care of the rest. And so I'll show that, you know, that, that point of attack here. So, you know, like I said, left tackle does just enough here. And I don't know if his you know, arms are outside, but he does just enough. The fullback here does just enough to kind of create that hole for our running back to get outside. And he's a very talented kid for us. Had probably close to 20 touchdowns this year. And once he got outside, you know, root receiver did enough outside there too. It's all he wrote. So, you know, it, that, that's a simple play for us, but I always tell people it's, it's one that you've got to rep and really be successful with. And, I think that was, you know, that was the key for that play is just making sure you're attacking. Like I said, those two blocks you know, are, are huge there. So I'll actually flip because I, you know, I ran something, you know, we ran something very similar at the the older, um, the older age, but I want to put this in here just to show. And we would run kind of um, out of 11 personnel, or sorry, this would be 21, excuse me. We had that same formation. We'd actually bounce this wing and this tight end. So, you know, we talked about motion. This was a, a this bounce was a shift that I actually would call and really would bring you know four receivers or four blockers to that wide side of the field and you know a play that we really like to run here too. But like you said, it was just a great just a you know, great play to get us outside. So again, good block and just that that play right there. And I had to get on this guy from like you're you're one of the fastest guys that I that I know. It's like just get outside and we always had to get on them you know this year about it, but. I, you know, I just want to throw that in there just as a simple shift that we like to use just to get numbers. And, and as you okay. talked about, shifts in motion are just so key to, you know, to make sure teams are put them on, you know, put them on a, you know, an uneven footing. So I just want to throw that in. I, I think I forgot that with the older group, but, you know, again, it's a simple play. All right, let's get back to our younger group. This was actually first uh, in 2017. So again, a very similar, like I said, a very similar play here, um, you know, for, for the Mighty Mites, and again, you see us under center. This is a Mighty Mite age. You know, again, we're under center, but, you know, something simple, but, we you know, we teach that same, those same blocking schemes and just make sure the guys know that, hey, running back reads one cut. You got that, you know, you actually got the fullback here on the on, on the edge right here. He knows he's got to make that one block of the linebacker. Again, that's the difference there. So a little different in formation, but, you know, kind of the same thing as we talked about, him not being here versus him actually being on the line. You know, he knows he's going to, you know, to the back or whoever shows up defensive end wise, seal that edge, and then the running back's really running off of that. So, you know, different different age, but really the same concept. And they double team and get him out of the paint. Good run. This was fun. I know, you know, I'll tell you, you know, going back, like looking at the mighty might years, these these are some of the ones that make you just smile, man. It's yeah, absolutely cool to see some of these guys. So here was another big run for us, kind of on that same play. Uh, actually, it's the same running back as you can see. Um, you know, and again, you know, we had a good job of, of guys really selling off, you know, the edge. And then, you know, as we talk about with ISO, I mean, really, you just, you know, you have our guys in a punt set, you know, scenario, but it's the same thing. This wing guy, you might as well be this fullback right here. His whole job is it quicker at the point of attack to make sure he, you know, make sure he helps make that block. He seals this guy, you know, outside here at the corner. And our running back really does a rest, man. He was a special kid. And like I said, I can't wait to see him at the high school level. And I still don't know how he didn't score. I think I, I think I still bother him about this. 
And the biggest thing with this group, you know, I, it's always a blessing for every group you have. You know, this, you look at this kid right here, like this kid, you know, he started, you know, he starts to play right here in the backfield. He starts blocking and you go look 70 yards down the field. And that's the kid sitting, you know, still in the front here trying to build the way. He's back here the whole time. It's like you know, watching this and you see the type of caliber some of these kids are. And it's no, you know, there's no reason why, wow. no excuse why you don't see. Like that's, that's the, the character of some of these guys, man. That, those are things that make me proud. And he's still Definition. trying to make <laughs> That's an effort play. That's what you call an effort play. And that's something yeah, you that's show on play. film to, to, to their kids. You know, that, that, that's, I didn't even notice it was that kid. But, yeah, that's a hell of a play, man. Yeah, I mean, awesome. that, that was the awesome. special thing about this group. Like, I, I thought, you know, and I'm, you know, just speaking this year, like, they really love blocking and going all out for each other. And I think that's something that, you know, I'm blessed to have. Awesome. awesome. All right. Um, so let me get quickly into duo. Um, keep doing that. So, again, so, you know, with this group, you know, being younger, we didn't really want to run power. Um, just thought it was a little tougher, you know, with this age. But one thing that we wanted to run, and you know, it's very easy to implement and, and put in. Heck, I use it at the high school level. It's one of my favorite plays, even at the high school level. It's just simply duo, which I always tell people, you know, it's power without the pull. Like, you know, for us, the, all that switches is we have the responsibility. So the tight end now goes to that linebacker and has that, you know, has that role. The fullback you know, goes directly to the defensive end. Um, just everyone else is the same. They're looking to create the the duo, the double, the two double teams, um, and and everyone, you know, like I said, outside outside guy here on the backside is blocking that defensive end. And so it's not a lot of install time up front, but it's great you know, to, to put in for the kids or something easy. And again, because, you know, I think the, the switch on who's blocking the defensive end, which is arguably team's best player, that switch is another weapon that you can have because he doesn't know who's getting it. It could be the guy in front or it could be somebody else. Um, here we had a defense and, you know, because our team you know, did so well and, and when you're playing inferior teams and Jeff, I don't know how you feel, especially with a wing based offense, you get some funky stuff. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's hard. And, you know, it's funny. I always laugh at the high school level when I'm talking to guys and they struggle and they, you know, are saying, well, you know, how do you deal with this and that? And it's like, man, you football, I've gotten a one and a nine to a, you know, to a two tight end set on the you know, strong side. Yeah. Like, yeah, same. Guys will give you some of the craziest things. So this was one here where you got a defensive end, you know, who's really trying to slash down and, and trying to play games. And, and they were aware they had film on us, so they knew we liked to run duo. And that was one of the one of the responses some guys would give. And you know, it's, hey, we're clear. <laughs> we, we we can bounce it outside. So again, same running back. We you know got this fullback here who was a great blocker for us, and clearly you can see. He did that quite a few times. Um, I forgot to get a one film. We, we ran duo three straight times. And the third time, the defensive end actually wrestled him and fought him because he was tired of getting clean like that. So this kid was an exceptional blocker. You know, tight end actually misses that. That kid is, you know, exceptional and, and fought hard. But really, like I said, the, the, the play side attack here on this, the fullback on the defensive end is a key. That's going to be what's going to get you the yards. You know, we have, we have, we make these two blocks outside that's a touchdown, but I just wanted to show that and, and, you know, how well we did with duo. So this is an interesting one. And actually I'm going to show it from the, um, from the PowerPoint. So again, I talked about, we had actually, you know, we had a game breaker at the quarterback uh, quarterback position. I, I'm blessed a lot of times to get two quarterbacks. Um, and this, you know, this year was no different. I had a guy pretty much that he could throw it and he was really a dynamic runner. So we were able to use the same duo blocking scheme and run um, Q counter out of uh, out of our bunt set. So kind of a blast in the past for us, getting back into more 10 personnel things. And so what we would do is create the same duo blocking, but it was almost like a duo split. So, you know, you have this back that's actually, which, you know, that number three that you saw waste away uh, the, the defensive end on the previous clip. He's going to go across the formation and block the defensive end. Um, that, this was a great play for us. It's worked well. Um, you know, a lot of times, like I said, we're blocking, double teaming up to the mic there. We're double teaming here to the back, uh, to the backer. We're actually leaving this defensive end open. I'm, my hard hit QB didn't fake the throw to the bubble out here, which would have helped, but I think he, you know, he benefited from that. And then you'll see on the clip, Mike actually, um, he actually came downhill into the double team and kind of got caught in the trash. This is, I'm trying to think which one's the better angle. Uh, crappy angles, but I think here maybe a better angle where you can actually see We've got two out here, and then a safety that's over top this trips. Um, let me see if this will help. All right, so 
we've got, like I said, got the two linebackers here. The front side defensive end, we'll see him meet there. Uh, this backside linebacker will take himself out of the play, and you'll kind of see the two double teams in the madness. I wish I had a better clip because this is, you know, this was clinic tape, and we really ran this well. And the left tackle gets just enough on the front side here for this to, for this to work. So then the quarterback goes here outside, and you'll see the left tackle get just enough here. Excuse the sound. The quarterback ends up taking it, and he's out of here. And see if I can slow this down a little bit. Yeah, this will this will work a lot better. So. You know, we'll see, you know, you can kind of see the two double teams in the mess, but you'll see the left tackle at the, you know, the middle of the screen, you know, just kind of leak out right here. As you can see him slowly look for the linebacker. He does a great job there. And it's, you know, it's hard to see the, the back, but the back does a good job on the left side of getting the defensive end on the front side. The left tackle, and this actually that left tackle, I was so proud of him because that that linebacker was on offense by scored, you know, they're getting this Virginia Beach for those who weren't aware. Uh, you know, he probably scored about five or six touchdowns in this game. I'm not going to lie to you. He was, he was amazing. So for our left tackle to actually get out there and get a piece of him, really cleared the way here and ended up resulting in the touchdown. Yeah, I like it. You know, a lot of times, too, I feel like a lot of people will, will adjust to that wing or the H, whatever you want to call it. So when you run, you know, go the other way with them. Like we played a team, play a really good inside zone team. And they've been running this year, the first time they ran split zones. So they were taking their H and sending them across, and that gave us a lot of problems. Especially, nice, yeah. you know, we were kind of forcing them to give because their quarterback was better than their tailback, which you know, gotcha. should be opposite. But, you know, the only good thing about playing read teams is you kind of dictate, you know, if you want them to give or pull, like you kind of dictate For sure. that. So we would no, force him yeah, to give, give into a, a front side stun or something we would run. But – that split zone, and they didn't run it all year up until they played us, and it was like, oh my god! I, I like bringing that. That we do the same thing with our beast too. We'll bring her inside. We call it wham, but you know he just comes gotcha, across yep. and kicks out. So yeah, I like that a lot, especially if you're oh, running duo awesome. and and even power when you're pulling the wrapping the backside guard, you know, and then going yep. the other way of it, man, it's big. I, I like it a lot. Oh, for sure. No, 100%. I mean, we were a big duo team in this game. I mean, we knew their linebackers were incredible. So we we knew that I wanted my tight end going full speed at that linebacker on the snap because he's coming downhill. So I didn't, you know, I, I felt like those couple yards would help. And I mean, really, we were pretty successful running duo in this game. But I mean, like I said, we, shoot, man, they put us on the clock. And this team was amazing. And you can clearly see why they were the national champions. It's like we weren't, we weren't a small team and they're, you know, they make us look small. So you know, you had to have kind of an ace in the hole, and this was something we had worked on and it really made it work. So, also another thing we did, you know, especially in the QB run game, um, we kind of ran a QB sweep. Um, you know, as Carolina was our, our bubble game, so we'd go three, four, or five Carolina. So we'd run, kind of run a QB sweep, uh, you know, bubble screen based on that corner. A lot of defenses play their, you know, their corner is that worst guy a lot of times, especially on wide runs and in, in youth football. So we, we really wanted to kind of make a, you know, an adjustment based on what he was doing. Our quarterback, even to give further uh, background, was a natural point guard. He played, you know, AAU basketball and everything like that. So he was great at making reads on the fly and able to kind of you know, make decisions while he's running just as, just as if he's driving and dishing with the basketball. So to play to his strengths, you know, I let him kind of free flow and, and, and you know, make his read based on what he saw. Wasn't as great, you know, as clear a read with showing this, but, you know, I always tell, you know, tell that to tell guys, like, when you've got an athlete that's great at what he does, you know, a lot of times his instincts usually are, are pretty dang good. And I felt even though the read wasn't there, I didn't really feel like he made a ton of poor decisions. So this was something simple to work for us. Again, you know, everybody has their thing that works for them. But, you know, with the offensive line, we really actually used our, our full slide protection. Um, that was what we did, you know, because we would do things off of this where he would he would roll and actually the five would fake bubble and you know, he would go deep. And so we ran some of that. Uh, but, yeah, so we just used slide protection with our offensive line. You know, that same call as if we got a double A gap blitz or, you know, whatever to that, that kept them from going upfield, kept them kind of on that same path where they're just pushing as hard as they can to the right. We had front side protection um, with our, you know, with our number two, uh, two back with that, you know, number three guy you've seen. to just really double team the defensive end to make sure we secured the edge. So I'll show, like I said, show a couple of clips there. Um, this will be the last one I have, but yeah, this is like, oh, sorry. This was a fun, like it's a fun little play for us. And I thought our, our guys did pretty well. Again, this was game one. And we actually ran it to the left as well. Like I said, he 
quarterback was good enough, but usually I was nervous. I'm nervous going to their to the weak side. So here, um, you know, he has he has a guy down here. We look at our, the corner. As far as he is off, you know, pre-snap indicator, I would expect him to keep this based on what we see. These two guys are clearly blocking the guy that they're looking for. The receiver's looking here, and, you know, we had trouble here. Once he realizes the quarterback, I guess a very clear read to the quarterback for when he's throwing it, for when he's going to tuck it and run. And I thought that was the great thing our quarterback did. It was very deliberate. If he's throwing it, he's throwing that thing. So uh, this was game one again for us. Um, you'll see the same thing. So we look here. The actual left tackle does a great job of, of going here. I would like for our running back to, to make sure a little better, but he was getting out there. I mean, you see our five here realizing, you know, he's, he's he is open, but in a situation like this, when you've got the edge clearly, I would have loved for him to just immediately go down and start blocking. Um, you know, QB did a great job. He does change that and actually makes a good block. You know, the back does a good job in, in filling that as well. Um, and this was before, this was you know, right before the half, which was a great play to run for us too because they're expecting us to throw. Uh, you know, it's, even, even with all the 20 and 21 personnel, you know, there are a lot of coaches or, you know, even as we've been coaching for a long time, everyone associates me, of course, with the guy that throws more than anybody. So hmm. we get a lot of that, you know, a lot of those looks. Which hey, it opens, opens, your up, opens up your run game, right? For sure. No, and that's that's it. You know, and that was the thing for me is that, you know, I, I love that reputation, even with our second group, which we were more ground and pound type team. Hey, I'll take that because it helps what we're trying to do. So this was a great example of the receiver. I said he recognized the running back was able to get there. We're before the half. Hell, this is just as good as a as a you know as us throwing the ball down the field. And you're talking 15 you know yard play here. This actually is the very next play. You know, this was a quick two minute you know offense. We're able to just really call this and go. But the corner here, you know, you would like for him to go and run. I mean, you know, I think this is one of those situations where you know, you've got to read it pre-snap. Running back should be doing a better job, you know, getting this this defensive end. So hopefully we'll do it, and we'll see. Like I said, the offensive line really kind of pass setting and should be working hard to the right. I was talking about that. It's a lot a lot easier sometimes to say than than anything. So we see the quarterback here looks a little different. He's looking to throw, but I, I think he was going to throw. But again, if I see that, <laughs> I'm going to tell my receiver just to go downfield and block. But yeah. you know, it's always fun just to you know just to see this. And just how they, you know, kind of how they perceive, you know, running an RPO. It's like some of the guys are, you know, they 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 kind of have their own interpretation. So it's always funny to talk to them after. And I think, like I said, seeing that, you know, seeing that DB kind of turn and run. So I think we had a go called actually instead of just a just him blocking. So it ended up being the perfect situation for him to just hey, just run and be successful there. So ended up working well for us. And like I said, another seven eight yard gain. You know, right before the half, we we're able to move the ball down the field. So. I didn't call it a lot. I think I had a couple more clips of it, but pretty much you get the gist. It was something that, you know, you got an athlete and you're able to really stretch the field and cause the defense problems. You know, it's something that I love. And, you know, really appreciate. So, you know, coach, again, like, you know, thank you for having me on. Um, you know, I, you know, welcome anybody. Here's my Twitter handle, uh, my email. If any coaches have any questions with some of the stuff we do, any questions run game wise, you know, I'm always happy to help. Um, I always tell people to this day to tell you know anybody even in the high school you know level I'm a youth football coach like that's where I got my start that's who I am that is what's made me you know what, what I've become so I love the youth game and as long as I can coach and, and give something back uh, I'm going to do that so I just you know I'm appreciative as I always say to my head coach for giving me the opportunity way back when my O line coach for for being a great you know support system friend and you know and even guys like you know Coach Tomiko and some others that have help pour into me to make me the coach I am. So like I said, coach, I appreciate you. Oh, no, thanks. For, uh, thanks for coming on. You know, I, I asked you to come on here. So, and I appreciate you taking the time, setting up a beautiful presentation and, I, and I'm sure we have a fairly large audience, so I'm sure they'll appreciate it and definitely will learn something from it. So again, thank you for coming on. You know, I invited you guys on. So, you know, I came to no, you I asking you guys it. to come on. So. No, that's great. That's like I said, I just love, um, you know, I just love doing stuff like this and it's just always fun. I mean, where are